Hi Peter, just a quick look now at the driver and where you started on the left versus the sort of work and sort of move that we want to add on the right. Same rules, when viewed from down the line, the same rules apply with driver as they do with your iron. Uh, if anything, it's a little bit more important with your driver um, due mainly to the gear effect that the heel strike brings and the, and the, the subsequent right curve we we extend for longer in the backswing so therefore we've got to move back into flexion uh, a little bit more for a little bit longer in transition having said that you will also find that because of the nature of the beast you'll want to perhaps extend a little bit sooner usually from about p6 everything starts to extend with driver to shallow out the angle of attack um, but the same principle applies as we extend, therefore we've got to flex forward in transition. Your tendencies are still the same to, to sort of as you extend or as you learn to extend during the session, you then have to learn to get back into flexion more for longer. And as you experienced in the days golf at Formby, when you, when you got it right, you can see a marked difference in both direction and distance. Um, it is a work in progress. It is something that is more difficult for you to do with driver, therefore you need to practice more with driver. Um, anything we've done, the same applies iron and driver. Like I say, it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's easy for you to do with iron, but it's easier. So therefore with the driver, it's more difficult. So therefore you've got to work at it more, you've got to exaggerate the feels more, etc., etc. But when you got it right for me, you could see the difference. Yardage was way up. Directionally, it was much better as well. Just got that nice little soft draw on one or two of them that went an absolute mile. So keep working these same pieces in. We have a little look at where you were to start. You'd spent a lot of time being told that obviously you've got to hit up excessively on driver, trying to launch it high. Um, as a result of that, we have not necessarily here, but historically high T peg, a lot of tilt in the shoulders, presetting some axis tilt. And I tilted away from the target a little bit as well. All a pretty good setup if we want to launch it really high and if we want to hit up on it excessively. From there, you would maintain that forward bend. So during the backswing, you were just basically turning around that forward bend. You can see your angles are all being maintained. So the forward bend that you established at address hasn't really diminished too much. There's been a little bit of extension but nowhere near as much as we would like. From there now, you're going to stay back on it for longer. We're going to see the head start to tilt away from the target more. We're going to see the left shoulder climb very quickly. I mean, from there now, there's absolutely no way we're going to look like we're chest onto it by the time we get to P5.5. Head's dropping back further and further. We're having to keep the angles in the wrist to prevent the club hitting the ground way behind the ball. And now we're going to start to pull the chest away from the ball to shallow things out. And we saw with the 3D work that we did that the extension through the hip was excessive, particularly in the chest area. Neck tilts are all over the paddock. A lot of bottom edge strikes. A lot of heel strikes. A severe loss of distance relative to how well and how far you hit your irons as well. So the first thing we need to do is look at creating a more appropriate setup. And what we talked about was we're going to use a level angle of attack as our baseline. Um, what we did initially was we got to hit some drivers off the deck. Now, hitting drivers off the deck is an unforgiving drill, uh, but it's a drill that really is the catalyst for a lot of the changes that you need to make in your swing with driver. And whilst it's unforgiving, it does encourage the correct sequence. Because the ball's on the floor, the setup changes slightly. Uh, the angle of attack can't be steep. When driver's off the deck, you know, you've got to, you, you can't be coming in four or five degrees down. You haven't got enough loft in your hand to get the ball airborne. So, task driven, dr task -driven drill. Um, the better you get a hitting driver off the deck, 
the more appropriate your tilts are going to be, the more appropriate your sequencing is going to be, the more appropriate your swing direction is going to be. So if we're too steep, we're not going to get the ball up in the air. If we're too shallow, we're going to hit way behind the ball and top a lot of shots. Um, the ball is on the ground, so therefore we've got to go into the ground in transition to encourage us to get the ball. Uh, when it's on a tee peg, a really high tee peg in particular, that encourages you to push up too soon um, to accommodate that high tee to create that high launch. So again, there's ways of getting a higher launch. Um, some higher launches or some shallower angle of attacks, more upward hits uh, are appropriate and some aren't. And in your case, you're doing it uh, the incorrect way. You're doing it by the tilting of the head away from the target, the severe lowering the right shoulder, the severe raising of the left shoulder, etc., etc. So first thing we did, put the ball on the ground. Straight away, the ball's come back in the stance a little bit. The shoulders have leveled out. The axis tilt now is more appropriate. Tilting the head or the eyes is more appropriate. And we're now setting up for a pretty level angle of attack. So, you know, if, you, if you're two, three degrees up, I can live with that. If you're, if you're maybe one, two degrees down, I can live with that also. But I don't really want to see a lot of severe angles of attack. So that was your setup, tidied up. In the backswing, originally, we maintained our forward bend. Left shoulder stayed very high. Head started to move down and across. And the advice I've given you here is to feel like instead of your, we looked at the pictures of Troy Matteson and instead of the ear pointing upwards, we asked you to feel like the left ear was pointing more downwards at P4. You can see when you do that, you create a completely different look to the top of your backswing. So here, we've not really extended the pelvis enough. We've kept a little bit of forward bend in the pelvis. We've kept a tremendous amount of forward bend in the spine. And the lead knee hasn't really done a great deal from where it was at P1. Whereas here now, we've extended the pelvis substantially. As a result of that, the spine has started to extend more. Uh, the issue is more in your pelvis than it is in your spine, by the way. And as a result, the lead knee has started to flex inwards as well as slightly behind the golf ball. So much freer turn. The left arm now can travel. Um, the distance required to hit driver without you lifting your arms. In transition, as you shift the hips forward on this one, the head drops further back. In this swing now, the hips don't really need to thrust forward quite as much as you're, you're maybe demonstrating originally. You can see now as you're coming into it, everything's tilted back much less. Alignments are looking more appropriate. Angle of attack is going to be more level. Much better looking P7. Shoulder tilts don't change as dramatically. And your motion through the ball is looking more like it would look when you're hitting your irons where the pelvis is pushed forward. The upper axis has maintained its stability. And the angle of attack, you know, with that technique that you're demonstrating on the right hand side, your angle of attack could be one down, it could also be two or three up. But the angle, the, the, the technique you're showing on, they're demonstrating on the left, just not going to get it done. Massive drop off in power, heel strikes, bottom edge strikes, high rate of closure, you name it, you've got the full, full shooting match there. You see everything turns through much more freely, much more incrementally on the right hand swing. So plenty of drivers off the deck. Always working on the shoulder tilts, keeping the head stable, not trying to hit down on it too much, but not trying to hit up on it excessively. The driver off the deck will not create too steep an angle of attack, 
as a better player, you'll always try and create a flight. And in order for you to create a flight when the driver's on deck, you've got to go back into flexion so you don't top it. You've got to extend coming into impact in order to shallow out the angle of attack and recover some loft on the golf club. And you can't afford to have a club face that's closing down too much because, again, that's going to de-loft the club. So a good all-round drill to create the sort of moves that you want when using driver. Um, when viewed from down the line, P5.5, etc., adding flex, all the same as when you were doing your, your irons. You want to do more and more and more of the same stuff. We don't need to we don't need to change the the overall mindset of what we're trying to achieve. We're still trying to keep the risk conditions in there. We're still trying to get back into our forward bend by P5.5. But with driver in particular, P4 needed tidying up. And so did P1. So big difference there at P4. And a much more appropriate P1. Well done. I look forward to watching the progress. It was great to meet up with you. It was awesome to have a day's golf with you as well. Really enjoyed the trip around Formby. Um, you know, just throughout the season, just stick to the process like you did last year. Um, try and enjoy the process as well. Don't get too down on yourself when you can't quite get it. And stick to the keys. You want to see that right shoulder at P4. So we don't get too much lifting and we want to always be trying to get back into flexion by P5.5 whilst keeping the risk conditions in the good luck with it and I look forward to watching it progress throughout the year.